Hi there, I'm Carl. My call sign is W8WZ. And today I'm going to do a little review of the Palstar BT1500A antenna tuner. I'm not very good at videos and I'm not an expert on antenna tuners, but when I was looking to buy this, I looked for other reviews of it and didn't find all that many and uh, thought that this might be helpful if I shared a little bit about my experiences with it. I hope it is, and I apologize for the bad quality of my video production skills and my lack of technical knowledge around impedance matching networks. But uh, we'll, we'll do what we can. Okay, so that's the antenna tuner. That's it in the, um, in the station. And uh, we're going to give you a little tour of what it's working with. So uh, the, the transmitter that it's matching, the transceiver is the Tentec Omni 6. that it's working with is uh, an MFJ. They call it an all-band doublet. It's basically a 102 foot long dipole, just like their G5 RV. And it's center fed with ladder line, their commercially produced 450 ohm window line. And uh, that antenna hangs at 100 feet up in the air between an oak tree in the front yard and a pine tree in the backyard. And in the middle of that is the house and that twin lead or ladder line, whatever you want to call it, comes straight down off of the antenna center point, right down into the ham shack. And we'll follow it from the back of the antenna tuner. You can see it comes in there. Uh, that, that string kind of holds it up. It goes down to a switch. And as you can see, that switch takes my antenna to ground with that one inch copper strapping, which goes out the window and down to the ground system of buried rods. Uh, or uh, when you want to use it to the transmitter and so we'll throw the switch and uh, get it on the transmitter side and i'm sure you heard the increased audio from the receiver the other antenna by the way which is not part of this review because it's hooked to a different system is a 80 meter inverted v up 100 feet at the apex and it's fed with uh, open wire feeders it's uh, commercially produced from a web page called TrueLadderLine.com. I don't know if you can see it out the window here. No, I'm not coming. There we go. Maybe. Sorry, I apologize. I'm just not good at video. There you go. That's its feed line. It comes out the window. It goes to a 10-foot tall post, uh, and then it goes across the backyard over to where the tree is, and it goes up into the tree up 100 feet. It's got 150 feet of feed line on it. This one is much less. The house is up 30 feet. The antenna is up 100 feet. So 100 minus 30, 90, 80, 70. It's got 70 feet of feed line on it. And um, that's it. Okay, and both of them, when they're not in use, they knife switch over the ground. The one we're not talking about today has a ballon on it. That piece of coax goes to an antenna switch where I can switch any one of six different transmitters that I have in the station into that system. The one that goes to the BT-1500 is the MFJ antenna that only hooked up for work with one transceiver, and that's my Omni-6 right there. Okay, uh, we'll, throw the, we'll throw that on in standby and let it warm up for the high power test. And we'll turn the lights on. The BT-1500A um, is what we focus on now that you kind of know the setting in which it's working. Uh, it requires 12 volt DC at very minimal amperage, um, less than, less than uh, an amp, about, about 500 milliamps at most is the draw I've seen on that measured. Um, and it's that, that 12 volt at that very low current powers that meter lamp and also the electric relays that it has to switch in and out for whether you're tuning a high impedance or a low impedance circuit. Buttons down here are very simple. Peak hold if you want to hold your peak power. Switching between peak when it's in or, or uh, average when it's out. Um, range you want it in out is in the 3000 range. In is in the 300 range. And your power button that engages the power for your light and your relays. Uh, other than that, it's simple capacitor. Inductor. Now, before using this type of antenna tuner, 
the antenna tuner that was being used is over there. And as you can see, it's the MFJ 949E, and it's hooked up to all, well, the Kenwood has its own. It's hooked up to the Drake, actually, right there. And then that Yezu goes to that little LDG. And then the stuff that's in the other room through that door is the old AM station. And that's its own world. Okay, um, so when I was using that antenna tuner, the way you tune that was you turn that inductance knob while on receive for the highest noise. And then you knew you were right on the right inductance tap. And then it was a matter of transmitting a weak signal and adjusting your two capacitors for low SWR. And you were tuned. Now that's great, except for this antenna tuner uses an entirely different method. It's a lot simpler to match because you only have two controls, but it's a lot harder to find where your match point is. You don't have one inductor to switch around and as soon as you hear the signal go up, you're there. You have to kind of start tuning that thing and move that slowly through until you get improved signal and then test it. Uh, the book gives you some suggested starting settings for both your C and for your L. Now, my antenna system, as I said, is a 102 foot long dipole up 100 feet, fed with 30 feet of 450 ohm ladder line. I did not find those preset numbers in the book to be helpful for my installation at all. I had to play around and find what was right for my station. Now the best way to do that, friends, is to get an antenna analyzer and hook it up and just do all of your changing of tuning settings until your antenna analyzer shows you you are resonant on your desired frequencies, then mark it, and then once all your resonant points are marked, then hook up your transmitter. I wish I had borrowed an antenna analyzer from a friend of mine uh, or bought one because that would have made my process a whole lot easier. I did not. I did it the old-fashioned way where I reduced my RF output power and would transmit on various frequencies until I finally found where my dials needed to be for matching. Now, you only have to do that once, because once you do that, let's see if I can get this here, you record those and make up yourself a little cheat sheet like this. And as you can see, I have done that. I don't really work above 20 too much. I mainly am on 40 for rag chewing, 20 for some nets, and 80 for some traffic nets. So those are where I work, and so I've made up a cheat sheet for those. As you can see, and not surprisingly, there's a big difference between 80 phone and, and 80 CW. So you actually have to do some changing there on those, just some capacitance adjustments. 40, the whole band is covered with that setting, and 20, the whole band is covered with that. Uh, so let's see how she works out. Okay, well... As you can see here, we are on 80, 75 meter phone, except to CW, but that's a phone frequency. It's where I, our traffic net is, our EV traffic net that I participate in. I'm calling it tomorrow night, so anyway, this station's set up for that. But uh, my, uh, my numbers there say uh, 35, 125, uh, that's actually going like 25, and that's about 123, so let's see how we are. And uh, that's barefoot. 25 there. 25 there. The, uh, the meters seem to be about where they should be there. The power meter on the on the power star lines up with the power meter on the center. So I assume it's probably fairly accurate that I'm putting out about 75 watts when I do that. Um, now when I push that in, you'll see that to the range changes. You can see there, about 100 watts it says, yeah. That's still saying 75, so we're not exactly as accurate when we're on the broader scale. But um, throw on the linear there, it's been on long enough to warm up a bit. That's about right for my linear settings. So let's see. And there we go, we're getting about 600 watts out, which is what I'd expect. So, um, as you can see, it handles full power. I just run, you know, 600 watts is my amplifier's normal running range. I could squeeze some more out of it, but I don't see the point. I actually probably back it off a little bit of that. I usually run 500, half gallon. And 
and um, that's good. So we'll take that out of line and um, we'll show you how to change bands. So you want to change bands. Well, you got to go up your transmitter, change those. All right, now that's ready to go. That's on my regular rag chew CW frequency. That's where I hang out almost all day long. Okay, well, that was easy to QSY. There's somebody calling CQ test. Let's see. So I want to go to 40, so I need to set my C to 12. So you come on down here and you move this down. There's 10. And that's about 12 or so. And then you go to L125. So the L over here. I'm sorry, I misread that. You want to go to L154. So go over here and change that to L154. Good. All right. I don't want to tune uh, people in the queue, sorry. see what we got here and I'm in the high power range put that down to the correct range and I'm a little off because I think I, I think those markings were actually for the frequency I'm normally on so you want to adjust that a little bit there we go I'm turning the crank and you can see I got that down um, Okay, and that's how you QSY. Um, so that's basically the usage of the antenna tuner. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Once you get those initial settings done, it doesn't take too long to QSY. Actually, a lot quicker to QSY when you're not trying to make a video of it and hold an iPad in your hand and focus it while you're working. But I will say this. Um, it's a very good tuner. They say that it's designed to do one thing and do it well, and that is to tune balanced antennas. It's the only full power balanced tuner that I am aware of. It is built very well. Uh, I have no problems at all with its quality of construction. I think it's worth the price they charge for it. I have no doubt that this thing will outlast me, barring some sort of unusual catastrophe like a lightning strike, God forbid, or you know, an atomic bomb destroys North Carolina and <laughs> something like that. But uh, if I was going to offer to Palstar any suggestions, I would please ask them to include a bypass feature so that I can bypass it and hook it up to a dummy load. I have, as you can see, some transmitters that I really like to use that require tuning into a dummy load. There's more of them in the AM room and in the Heathkit room back behind that door. And I would love to be able to use those radios with this PAL star without having to tune up on the air, which I do not want to do. But in order to use those, I'd have to put a switch in between the transmitter and the antenna tuner. And I just don't really want to do that. I have, I have other ways of accomplishing my goals, but that's the only way you could do it with this. And you'd have to have a switch in line, uh, which isn't the end of the world, but other antenna tuners, such as that old little Kenwood right up here, you know, it has the switch there for bypass to go right to a dummy load. You can see it's on the dummy load now. So I can tune that and then throw the switch in and then start matching. The MFJ, you know, it's got a dummy load built into it. So all I have to do is throw the switch there. The Kenwood goes to its tuner. The Drake goes to the MFJ. The, that solid state, it does not need to tune the LDG auto tuner matches that one but I'm really limited on this I have to you'd have to put in manual switches or, or go and, and unhook cables and such to tune a transmitter to these with it using a solid state transmitter is no issue at all you know and I know that's what most people are using these days but I really wish that it had a switch where I could do bypass dummy load so that I could put a dummy load on there and tune it right that would be really really nice um 
it would also be nice if you could tune your amplifier. Okay. Because the way this is now, I do not have the ability to tune the amplifier off the air. Um, you know, you get it pretty close and make some last minute tweaks, it doesn't take forever. But with the PAL star, with that hooked into the PAL star, directly from the amplifier to the PAL star, there's no way of switching that to dummy load. It's only going to the antenna. So I would really appreciate if they put a switch in to bypass the input directly to a dummy load to allow us to tune into dummy loads without having to add additional switching networks or running around plugging and unplugging cables midway through. That is my only critique of it. Other than that, it is an absolutely wonderful rig. I like the cross needle SWR display. Uh, I prefer that. You know, I've got a single, I've got a regular traditional style SWR meter in line there with my amplifier. But I prefer the cross needle. I like it. I, I like it on my MFJ. I like it on this one. Um, I would also, you know, if we're talking critiquing, I'd switch those out to LEDs, those lamps, those meter lamps. Um, I really need to do that in the Tentec 2 and here. If they ever burn out, they're going to be switched out with LEDs. I've already done that mod over there, but um, I wish that they would just come with LEDs. It's a new enough equipment today. I don't, any, any stuff being made and designed today, I don't see why they're still putting incandescent pilot lamps and they're just going to burn out eventually. Just put LEDs in from the factory would be the design change I'd suggest. Those are very minor things. As far as doing what it does, it matches my antenna network no problem, very efficiently, and uh, I'm very happy with it. I feel very confident that I don't mind putting my power into that and knowing it's being matched properly up into the antenna. And um, I find it very, very good. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them to me. My email address is my call sign at AOL.com. And uh, if you send me an email, ask about Palstar 1500, I'll share my experiences with it. And um, I hope this is helpful to you. If you are looking to buy an antenna tuner that will run legal limit and match, your balanced antenna system, um, you know, there's not too much competition for this, and I think it's, uh, I think it does what it says it'll do, and it does it quite well. And with that, I'll say 73 to you. Thank you for watching my review of the Palstar BT 1500 antenna tuner, and I hope you have a very good afternoon. 73 from W8WZ.